Good afternoon. Thank you very much for coming here. My name is John Herbst. I run the Reagent Center here at the Atlantic Council. We have a, a very good program for you today, one we're putting together in cooperation with Free Russia, uh, Natalia Arnaud, who's our partner. Thank you, Natalia. Uh, we do a great deal of work in the Russian space. We talk about the problems of Russian foreign policy, but we also talk about the openings of Russian society. And our event today is very much on those openings. We have a distinguished panel. I will not describe them for you. You have bio sheets. Wayne Berry, a colleague of mine from the State Department who knows the internal scene in Russia better than just about anyone in Washington, has agreed to moderate. With that, I turn it over to Wayne. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, and for those who are watching on webcam, may I say welcome to the Atlantic Council of the United States. While I am currently not a member of the staff here, I'm with the American Foreign Policy Council, uh, there was a time uh, in the latter part of the 1990s when I created a program here at the Atlantic Council called On European Societies in Transition, which was about the problems of all the countries, starting with East Germany, all the countries of the former Warsaw Pact, former Soviet Union. Now, I always was a little unclear in my mind as to what that word transition meant. We knew what they were transitioning from, but I was never clear in my own mind what they were transitioning to. And 20 years later, I think it's very clear that transition is more a process than a destination. It's a journey, it's not a place. Uh, and all these countries are in that process in a complexity of different ways. If we look at what has been happening in recent years in countries like Poland and Hungary, and compare that with countries like Ukraine and Uzbekistan. If you contrast Armenia with Azerbaijan, if you look at East Germany or you look at Turkey, you see a great variety of how societies are a generation after the end of the Cold War in this transition process. We have today three very, very interesting people from Russia a country that some might say has been in transition for most of its millennial history. They come to us as experts in something that we don't hear very much about in Washington, which is local governance in Russia. We are so focused on the Kremlin and on the coming back of Kremlinology as a political science form here in the United States that we forget the wisdom of one of our own former politicians who said that all politics is local. And the importance of local politics as a breeding ground for the politicians of tomorrow and the place where people gain expertise and knowledge in politics, I think is very important. You all have, uh, or should have, uh, we can get you the bios on our three visitors and speakers today. I will not go in, into that in detail. Each of them will introduce uh, their topics, their themes, their ideas briefly. Uh, and then we will go into a conversation uh, which the audience uh, hopefully will, will participate. Uh, but it will be my job to make sure that the conversation uh, keeps going. And I would just say that it's my objective here not so much to obtain answers to questions that Americans might have about politics in Russia, but perhaps to give us as Americans a better idea of what the re right questions are from our visitors. And so I would ask Yulia to go first. Uh, to give us her thoughts, and then we will move on to our next speaker. Добрый день. Я очень рада, что меня сюда пригласили. К сожалению, я буду говорить по-русски, потому что мой английский не так хорош для того, чтобы говорить о таких сложных вещах, которые связаны с Россией. Good afternoon, and uh, my name is uh, Julia, and I'm, uh, I would like to apologize that I'm going to speak in Russian because unfortunately so my English is not that fluent uh, to speak and dwell on problems of Russia that I intend to pour the lights upon right now. Я приехала в Америку несколько дней назад, и но позавчера в России случились очень важные события. 
А, мой сын, моя дочь и мой муж а, все ходили на митинги а, на Тверской, а, и слава богу, их не задержали. I, uh, I've arrived to uh, the United States several days ago, and uh, just the day before yesterday, the, a very important, a very important uh, uh, event has occurred. Uh, uh, the rally, and uh, my son, my daughter, and my husband participated in the rally. And luckily for me, none of them were detained. None of them were detained. Но, к сожалению, больше полутора тысяч человек по всей России были задержаны. But unfortunately, so more than 1,500 uh, people were detained throughout Russia. И слава богу, этот протест остался мирным, несмотря на все провокации, которые uh, наши власти uh, организовали против uh, людей, которые вышли на митинги. And uh, praise the Lord that it still remains within the peaceful format that rally, because our uh, official powers have, have done everything in their uh, power to uh, provoke people and those who rallied uh, and came out into the streets, but it was still peaceful. Впервые uh, у нас избивали детей, не просто задерживали, задерживали нас и раньше, а избивали детей. For the very first time they were beating up on children. It was not the first time that they would have detained our kids, but it was for the very first time that they hit the kids. Uh, и впервые uh, в разгоне демонстрации принимали участие не только полиция, но и казаки с нагайками. And it was for the very first time that not only the law enforcement, the local police was partaking in detaining and uh, harassing the rallying demonstrants, but they also had the Cossacks with the whips. И, как мы видим, цели наших властей заключается в том, чтобы сделать этот протест не мирным, а цели наших граждан заключается в том, чтобы сохранить мирный протест, мирное преобразование, демократизацию с нашей страны. And as we can see that our authorities are doing everything they can to transform this peaceful rally and make it a violent event, while the true intention of all the demonstrants was to have a civilized, peaceful transition towards democracy. Власти хотят превратить протест в то, как описывал Пушкин, великий русский поэт Александр Пушкин, Пугачевский бунт. Русский бунт бессмысленный и беспощадный. So the authorities are trying to recreate the atmosphere of the famous Russian uh, riots described by the famous uh, poet of Russia, Alexander Pushkin, the Pugachev's riots, when it was uh, a senseless and useless rioting and violence. Мы же можем противопоставить этому другую стратегию. И эта стратегия связана не с насилием, а с развитием нашего общества. And we're trying to come up with alternative non-violent strategy to oppose that, uh, to uh, target our efforts towards peaceful development of our society. Развитие нашего общества на пути к демократии, к развитию демократических ценностей в обществе. Towards the democratic values and democratic ways uh, uh, development in our society. И uh, у нас есть для этого очень хорошие предпосылки, потому что за последние пять-семь лет мы увидели uh, значительный рост низовых инициатив, грассрутс инициатив, uh, uh, которые связаны с очень разными вещами. Это и сохранение экологии, сохранение старых зданий, помощь животным, помощь uh, детям, сиротам, uh, и, и так далее, и так далее. Mm -hmm. And uh, luckily, so we have quite uh, a great experience and potential to work with this, because right now uh, we have grassroots participation that has been developing for the last five years, those initiatives of grassroots uh, civil participation, uh, they have different uh, venues such as uh, environmental protection, uh, animal protection, seniors and children protection, etc., etc. Многие из тех людей, которые занимаются такой гражданской низовой активностью, не разделяют весь комплекс демократических взглядов, не разделяют, может быть, они даже считают, что 
Крыма – это не аннексия, или что война в Сирии – это хорошо, но, однако, они двигаются по пути демократизации, изменения своего сознания шаг за шагом. And of course, uh, not each and every uh, member of the civil uh, grassroots participation believes that uh, uh, Syria's uh, war is bad. They think it's okay. Some of them, uh, at least, and uh, across the spectrum, some of them think that it wasn't an occupation of the Crimea. However, I would like to point out that they're slowly, ever so, but steadily, are moving towards the new ideas of uh, democratization of the society. И э, наша задача помочь э, людям в этом пути, наша задача как э, про демократических сил в России, и э, это путь, который состоит из нескольких этапов. So it's our role and our task as of uh, pro-democratic aids and uh, powers to assist them in that way of uh, transitioning, and it has several stages. Uh, Какое-то движение, гражданское движение, возникает после того, как власти каким-то образом ущемляют самые близкие коренные права людей. Usually the civil movement appears where the civil rights or some other rights of people are being infringed and suppressed by the official powers. И тогда люди осознают, что у них есть некоторые ценности, Uh, которые uh, раньше они даже для себя не артикулировали. That is exactly the juncture when people start realizing that they had certain values sleeping deep inside of them that they've never even articulated before. И тогда многие из них начинают получать новые компетенции по защите своих прав, uh, появляются новые практики и новые институты. That is exactly where they uh, start obtaining new practices and new competences and that is where the new institutes are emerging. Иногда происходит процесс наполнения новым содержанием существующих институтов. And sometimes the existing institutions are just getting a new content. И затем возникают, появляются новые лидеры, новые гражданские лидеры. And that is when you get new civil leaders and uh, new civil movements. И uh, примером такого uh, явления, таких uh, событий является программа реновации uh, uh, в Москве, которую объявили в прошлом году. Это программа, связанная с, uh, с разрушением домов и строительством новых домов. And uh, as an example of such new uh, initiative is the program that was announced last year and proposed last year. Uh, and that is uh, in conjunction with the uh, demolition of old buildings in Moscow, and it's called the renovation of Moscow. На фоне этой программы возникло очень много протестующих людей, которые раньше никогда не выходили на какие митинги. And that program actually, uh, against the backdrop of that program, we've seen a lot of uh, new people who never have uh, rallied before in their lives that poured into the streets to express their protests. И они создали, многие из них создали советы своих домов. И некоторые из них пошли на выборы, на муниципальные выборы в Москве. And that is the, the, the group of people, uh, those people who created their own uh, house uh, councils, and those are the people who actively participated in the municipal elections in the city of Moscow. То есть мы видим, что за процессом гражданской актив, э, активности возникает следующий этап, это этап политизации. So we can see that after this uh, political awakening and activization, uh, we see that the next step is politization of their uh, ideas and movements. Однако э, в России сейчас э, очень низкое доверие к политике и к политикам, mm -hmm. и люди, многие боятся э, вот этой политизации. However, the level of trust towards the official powers is extremely low in Russia, and of course, a lot of people are just afraid and uh, not trusting this new politicization process. Поэтому еще одна задача, важнейшая задача нас как политиков – это возвращение доверия к политикам, к политике и к демократии. So that is why we have this new additional task as politicians which is the re-establishment of trust 
uh, towards politicians and trust towards democracy. Депутаты, которых выбрали в Москве прошлой осенью, уже сейчас доказали, что несмотря на небольшой объем их полномочий, а в Москве у муниципальных депутатов очень маленький объем полномочий, они могут делать вещи, которые нужны людям и которые доказывают людям, что демократия это не фетиш, но это полезный инструмент. And so despite the fact that the municipal uh, pol the, the, the people who were elected towards the municipal uh, bodies, they have quite uh, a limited, uh, you know, uh, power. Still, they have done so much, and they have pro uh, already demonstrated and projected how, even with a limited amount of power, they can do significant changes. Наших муниципалитетах создали социальные такси. Депутаты помогают людям добиваться качественного капитального ремонта и благоустройства. Депутаты помогают бороться за раздельный сбор отходов. And basically our municipal deputies are helping to create uh, valuable initiatives such as social taxis and uh, decent uh, rehabilitation and renovation of uh, uh, buildings and also recycling. И при этом Завоевывая доверие граждан, муниципальные депутаты становятся новой политической силой, которая выходит на более серьезную арену, на более политический уровень. So, and by uh, helping the, uh, the citizens to uh, re-establish or re-invoke their trust towards uh, powers and political uh, activists, They're uh, doing their work, they're creating their initiatives and uh, political, um, политические, um, заявления, делают политические заявления. Right, and, and they're coming out with their political statements. Так, например, глава Ирского района сразу после избрания сделал заявление, сделал заявление о том, что призыв полиции, чтобы они не разгоняли демонстрантов на uh, очередной акции. Mm -hmm. А Тверской район, я просто поясню. Можно чуть-чуть рай... мне дать время, потому да. что я потом забуду. Хорошо. Хорошо. Uh, mm -hmm. So basically, I just want to give you one example. Uh, our uh, Tver municipal district uh, political uh, leader has uh, come up with an initiative and he addressed the local police enforcement agencies and he said, please do not use violent forces towards the railing demonstrants. При этом а, Тверской район, это район, где находится Кремль. Следующим шагом а, муниципальных депутатов является выдвижение а, своего кандидата на выборах мэра Москвы. The next step of our municipal deputies would be to nominate their own uh, uh, candidate towards the uh, Moscow election. Таким кандидатом стал глава Красносельского района Илья Яшин. So Ilya Yashin, who was the head of the Krasnoselsky district, became one of those nominated candidates. Uh, он выдвигается не как uh, персональный лидер, а как uh, представитель команды, представитель политической силы. He is not nominated as a uh, personal individualistic leader. He is uh, nominated as a team member, as a representative of a team. Таким образом, uh, мы видим четкую стратегию, которая необходима uh, сейчас по демократическим силам в России осуществлять. So this way we see a distinct strategy of the pro-democratic uh, powers that needs to be uh, imp implemented and performed in Russia. Помогать um, населению становиться гражданами to help the uh, population become more civically alert and true citizens, uh, to help the citizens to become, uh, become uh, civil activists, and to help the civil activists to become local politicians. Потому что именно местная политика позволяет расширить количество политиков в России, которых так не хватает. Because it's up to local politicians to increase the number of uh, Russian politicians that are lacking so badly.
Она позволяет вернуть доверие к политике. It enables us to return trust uh, towards politics. Um, оно пос позволяет um, уйти от идеи персонального лидерства в, в области uh, институционального лидерства, распределенного лидерства. It allows us to withdraw from the idea of personalized, institutionalized leadership in politics. Uh, и uh, у нас есть на uh, победу на местном уровне ресурсы. And we have victorious resources at local levels. Что мы уже доказали этой осенью which has been proven by us this last fall. И с местного уровня мы должны двигаться не вперед и не вверх, а мы должны двигаться, расширять круги этого политического лидерства, и таким образом с этих, эти круги позволят изменить наше общество. And from our local uh, political leadership, we do not have to move uh, up or Uh, uh, far up front, uh, we just have to enlarge our circle, which will enable us to embrace the civil society participation. Я уверена, что изменение демократизации России возможно только снизу. I'm quite confident that changes and democratization of Russia are only possible from uh, grassroots and up. Потому что любая демократизация сверху уже доказала, что это она все время возвращается, возвращается авторитарным режимом. Because any democratizations that was uh, happening from uh, top down, they have proven only one thing that it keeps on coming to the uh, authoritarian regime. И хорошая новость заключается в том, что у нас есть стратегия. The good news is that we have a strategy. У нас есть определенные ресурсы. We have uh, certain resources. И у нас есть uh, глубокое желание, чтобы Россия двигалась по пути демократии. And we have uh, a deep desire to have Russia move towards democratic development. Спасибо. Thank you. Thank you, Yulia. Uh, let us love. May we hear you. Well, uh, good afternoon. Uh, I am uh, Vladislav Naganov. I am a member of the uh, Himki City Council. Uh, Himki is the city satellite of Moscow and uh, it is well known uh, thanks for Yevgenia Chirikova and uh, uh, her movement for protection of uh, Himki forest. Maybe you heard about it. Uh, now uh, Himki forest is a grassroots uh, symbol of uh, Russian uh, activism, I think. And um, you know, local activists uh, camped out uh, there uh, in the forest and uh, set up barricades. Uh, after that, Chirikova uh, ran for mayor in 2012 and took second place. It was a great campaign. And uh, mm, because of this campaign, uh, we uh, became able to uh, get 10% at local elections in uh, 2016. Uh, I was a representative of uh, Ms. Chirikova at uh, the city election commission and uh, one of her campaign managers. Um, so uh, this campaign determined a breakthrough result. At the same time, there were uh, federal parliamentary elections and uh, mm, our party, Yabloka, uh, took only 2%. So you can to compare results, uh, 2% at federal level uh, in uh, the uh, Himki city and uh, 10% at local level. So um, over the past six years, uh, ecological problems uh, became even more vital in the whole Moscow region. And uh, there are now good conditions uh, for grassroots movements. Um, you know, um, mass closure of uh, landfills uh, in different sites of Moscow region um, led to uh, some kind of garbage collapse. And uh, authorities are not able to uh, propose solution. Uh, they uh, h hadn't done it for many years. And uh, so now uh, people uh, hold rallies uh, in a lot of districts of uh, Moscow region mm, because the uh, capacity of uh, uh, landfills that uh, remain uh, functional is not sufficient. So uh, people uh, watch uh, long uh, convoys of garbage trucks and they feel uh, emissions of uh, landfill uh, gas. So of course uh, uh, they would like to protest. Uh, 
people don't believe that uh, incineration plants proposed by uh, regional authorities uh, are safe. So uh, authorities too uh, cannot convince them that uh, these incineration plants are safe. And uh, of course, uh, local uh, residents uh, campaign against uh, these plants um, because they know that there is an uh, existing uh, incineration plan, uh, plant uh, uh, in Moscow and uh, they feel um, these uh, fumes uh, in the air and uh, so uh, uh, the people don't want uh, to have uh, these incineration plants uh, in Moscow region. Uh, for example, uh, in April, uh, thousands of people uh, held uh, rallies in uh, Volokolamsk district, and uh, these uh, rallies uh, resulted in uh, um, re uh, resignation of uh, the head of local administration. Uh, also, local residents uh, held rallies uh, in uh, uh, Kolomna district, in uh, uh, Voskresensk and uh, Naginsk district of uh, Moscow region, and uh, my friend and well-known lawyer and the close ally of Evgenia Chirikova, uh, Dmitry Trunin, uh, uh, held rallies in Solnichnagorsk against plans of uh, construction of incineration plan. Uh, it's necessary to know that uh, Mr. Uh, Trunin was the first number uh, at the list of candidates of uh, Yavlka party, uh, which gained uh, three mandates uh, in Kimki district in uh, 2016. Mm. Together with Mr. Trunin, we initiated a referendum procedure uh, uh, in order to um, propose uh, the construction of the first incineration plant uh, in the settlement of Barvika, where, where uh, Russian ruling uh, circles live. Uh, because, uh, you know, uh, they say that uh, these incineration plants are safe, so uh, it's reasonable that the first one should be built uh, near their own homes, I guess. Mm. Of course, we understand that uh, regional election uh, uh, commission and uh, uh, regional uh, Duma uh, will prevent us, uh, but uh, of course we will uh, finish up the procedure uh, and the people will see that uh, nobody will stop us. Uh, there are also widespread protests of uh, defrauded real estate uh, investors and protests of local residents uh, against the uh, infield development uh, all over the region. Mm. A lot of people and uh, even uh, local allies are against uh, governor's uh, reform. Mm. You know, uh, he wants to appoint uh, heads of administrations everywhere, and so he decided to uh, uh, change the situation uh, when there are uh, existing uh, urban districts, uh, 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 municipal districts, and he wants that uh, there should be uh, uh, urban districts against municipal districts because uh, he signed special law before this, and uh, in uh, urban districts he can appoint mayors. So uh, I help people of uh, Taldon municipal districts to save uh, uh, their municipality two years ago. We held the rallies in uh, Taldon and the Prudna cities won public hearings and uh, now this uh, municipality is one of the few uh, remaining municipal districts of the Moscow region. Mm. You know, we should uh, build political basis in order to win elections not only at local level but after that uh, at regional and federal level. Without net of supporters, uh, uh, without their support we will not be able to win elections. So now we initiated a special uh, program in order to create uh, associations of homeowners. We started in uh, the Himki district and uh, over the uh, past six months we uh, had created about uh, 60 associations of homeowners uh, in our plans to uh, create uh, more than uh, 500 associations of homeowners. So uh, we prepare to next elections uh, and uh, in uh, three years, if we will work hard, I'm sure that we will be able to win not only at local level, but at regional and federal too. We are interested in it. Thanks.
Thank you. And now, Natalia, if you would please. Uh, I'm Natalia Shevchukova, I'm an uh, organizer and correct, uh, uh, correct to say, uh, uh, co-organizer, co-founder of local government school, and I'm very proud to be there and uh, to share my opinion with you. And uh, last evening, uh, we argued with my friends uh, with a group of uh, smart, well-educated people uh, have a right, has a right to force other people in uh, some country uh, to live in democracy. And uh, we know that Suri Isai Berlin uh, gave a good answer for this question. Uh, coup d'etat could be forced, economic growth could be forced, but what about democracy? Uh, democracy is a process, it's a, a sort of religion. At a set of beliefs, uh, views of human nature, face of solidarity and goodwill. And we cannot force it. Uh, we can only preach and advocate it. And uh, it's impossible for one group uh, to assign values of other group. Uh, it's, it's impossible for one person uh, to assign alternative personality. And, but what is personality? Personality is a result of activity. Uh, we act and we change our self-awareness. We gain experience and we change our self-esteem. We act together with other people and we increase our social capital. Act is the first. And we act. We don't wait for changing so-called Russian mentality. And uh, there are three ways how to change our country. Uh, the first is to work inside uh, uh, Putin's system and Putin's administration and try to change it inside, from inside. And uh, uh, some of us know the result. Uh, uh, do, uh, do remember a former governor of uh, Kirovskaya Oblast, Nikita Bilich, and about his fate. He's now he's detained. He was a, a so-called system liberal, and uh, he, he, he is a former leader of uh, Union of Writers' Forces. It was my party also. And uh, another example, uh, former uh, Minister of uh, Economics, Alexei Lukaev, is also detained. He's also in prison. Uh, the second, and uh, that, that case is uh, Speak, uh, speak for themselves. And the second way is to try change the power through public protest. Uh, but the question is, what we'll do the day after our celebration, the day after our victory? And uh, do, do we have enough uh, qualified people for the administration to be in power, uh, to run office, uh, to be deputies of State Duma, uh, to be a, a deputy of, of local parliament, don't. And uh, it's very important to support protests. It's uh, in action. And uh, it builds solidarity in civil society. And uh, some, some days ago, we organized also a small picket uh, in front of Russian embassy to support our colleagues in Moscow. And uh, uh, we were on in Soft Plaza, but our hearts were in Moscow, in Moscow uh, streets, and Moscow squares. But it's not enough. We see and follow the third way. Uh, while pro-democratic forces are banned from participation of federal and mostly regional elections, we have a lot of opportunities on local level. We develop long-term strategy. Uh, last year, you know, that more than uh, 250 local opposition leaders became deputies of local councils in Moscow. And many people were also elected in Pskovskaya Oblast. Uh, new opposition in Moscow has majority in uh, nine districts. And uh, there are new United Russia deputies in some districts uh, uh, including Gagarinsky district where Mr. Putin uh, resides and where they work. 
And uh, this success was the result of uh, cooperation and activity of uh, some project and political groups, uh, mostly new and informal. I included our group, uh, local uh, governance school with Yulia, uh, and uh, group of Dmitry Gutkov and Maxim Katz, and uh, Open Russia project and the Yablka Party, and many, many local advocacy groups and single political and local activists. Uh, our local governance school was created in uh, 20, uh, 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 the 12th, uh, 12th, and firstly it was named uh, uh, New Power School and supported by uh, Alexei Kudrin, former um, Minister of Finance of Russia. And uh, some years ago, Julia joined this project, renamed it, and now it, uh, it launched it uh, uh, the second time. And uh, now it's an uh, independent and non-partisan project. Uh, we focused on training uh, on civil and political campaigns, study of legislation, budget, and best urban practices. Our main activity is organizing three-day seminar for local activists. Uh, we have more than uh, 500 alumni uh, of that seminars and uh, uh, 149 uh, Moscow local deputies are affiliated with our project, uh, and including the head of uh, Tversko district, Yakov Yakubovich, and head of Tripariov Nikulina district, uh, Alexander Gagarin. Uh, also, we organized mm -hmm. projects on developing local media, municipal anti-corruption, and have special programs for women and yes, involvement to politics. Uh, most of our participants are members and supporters of liberal political movement or parties. Uh, of Alexei Navalny uh, party, Yablaka party, Parnas party. But uh, we are open for all people, for despite of their political attitudes. We uh, I don't want to, tend to, uh, to uh, create only uh, uh, a space for training, but also a space for dialogue between different political groups uh, uh, who want to uh, improve local life and build uh, strong communities. Uh, we already work in Russian uh, regions and have thousand, uh, thousands of uh, uh, alumni there. And we hold big expectations uh, about St. Petersburg uh, uh, local elections, uh, which will take place the next year, uh, the next September. And recently, a local uh, governance school, together with the project United Democrats in St. Petersburg, held a big uh, conference uh, with uh, 150 future candidates. And uh, we desire to extend our success in Moscow to uh, other regions. Uh, and we collaborate with uh, leading experts on local governance, including current and former uh, local officials and people who drafted national law on local governance uh, um, uh, 20 years ago. And uh, now that people have uh, new uh, municipal deputies in Moscow prepare amendments for, uh, to improve uh, the regional constitution and uh, extend the power of local authorities. And uh, uh, we were asked here very um, um, some, sometimes uh, uh, what is the difference between uh, social and political process? And um, people in, in Russia protest against the landfill in Moscow regions, uh, so-called uh, renovation of Sabian in Moscow, and um, uh, against west burning plants uh, for separate for separate uh, waste collection. And uh, uh, people defend their parks, they feel their way of life, uh, uh, words and. Uh, Want to uh, create some change in, uh, changes in their district. They discuss uh, paid parking, kind of price, and uh, um, they uh, try to defend historical quarters and, uh, and manors and single homes. And uh, mostly they appeal both for uh, party of power and opposition. And uh, we compete in, in this way. Uh, and uh, there is a new actor on political, uh, in political life in Russia. It's an angry taxpayer. Uh, 
angry taxpayers didn't exist uh, even uh, 20 years ago. Angry taxpayers uh, possess a modest department, a houses, a small business, and they ask uh, and uh, they ask power uh, why uh, we have bad roads and no water supply system in Russian regions, uh, villages, and uh, why we, had, we don't have uh, effective firefighters in camera while the government spell, uh, spent our money in Ukraine and Syria. And uh, is it political protest? I, I don't know, but uh, I should remind you about, uh, about, uh, um, uh, about a very good slogan of, uh, uh, in your country, uh, which appears before your country. No taxation without representation. It's the same quite the same in Russia. And, uh, uh, but at the same time, um, these uh, angry, uh, angry taxpayers can vote for Putin. Uh, but for example, uh, uh, in Volokolansk, uh, where uh, we, uh, we uh, held a huge ecological rally, people support Putin and they vote for him. And uh, again, uh, more than 70% uh, on elections, in federal elections. But nevertheless, <laughs> people support local opposition. It, it, it's a fact, a very interesting fact. But what, what can we do? Uh, we can wait until angry taxpayer change his mind about Putin, or we should act. Uh, we act. And we offer angry taxpayers a solution. If you want to change something, just participate in politics. Uh, you can support opposition candidate, or you can run office by yourself. And by, by but we can give give you tools, and uh, we we can help you. And uh, we uh, connect social uh, protesters with political activists and other uh, protesters group and other advocacy group uh, in in uh, Russia and inside uh, regions. And local politics is uh, an incubator for uh, future regional and national political leaders. It's a way of stretching in local communities, create trust and social capital. And uh, the best way to spread effective social practices. We overcome biases of national character. We change behavior. We build bridges and we act. Thank you. Thank you. I would like to start the discussion by asking what admittedly a rather broad question. Uh, the head of the Moscow Carnegie Center, Dmitry Trenin, has described the political system in Russia today as authoritarianism with the consent of the governed. And it seems to me that uh, President Putin's electoral numbers are more about consent than support. But what you are talking about in politics at the local level is about obtaining active support. Getting people at the local level to participate in politics because they feel motivated. Now, we've seen types of things that create this motivation. A disaster in Kemerova. People who want to preserve something that is important to them, like the Kimki Forest. But ultimately, local politics is about getting people to devote their time, their money, their efforts, and sometimes to challenge their neighbors. And that's really about not consent, that's about obtaining active support. And my question, I suppose, is if we take as a hypothesis that authoritarianism with the consent of the governed is a description of national politics in Russia. How have you been able, the three of you, been able 
to inspire people at the local level to become active in support and not simply consent to what local authorities give you. How have you managed to make that step from people accepting something at the local level to being willing to actually devote their time, their money, their effort to trying to obtain either to preserve something or to change something. I'm not sure how I would do that where I live in Arlington, Virginia, still less in Moscow Oblast or, or anywhere else. That's a very broad question, but how do you do it? Can I? Please. Okay. I don't think it's the fault of my or someone from the politics, but it's the fault of the whole society that is already ready to defend their interests. I do not think that it is my personal merits or the achievement of my colleagues per se. I think it is the desire of our civil society and our society to express their will. В моем районе в шестнадцатом году в парке, который называется Дубки, решили построить дом, многоэтажный дом, и сотни людей, даже тысячи, вышли на защиту парка. So, and basically it's about the willpower and the desire to defend their interests. For example, in my district in 2016, they decided to, create, uh, to build a huge apartment complex in place of a local park called Dubki. And the people poured out into the streets protesting the construction. Людям пришлось столкнуться с агрессией со стороны полиции, со стороны охранников, однако они продолжили протестовать. The people uh, were confronted with the police brutality and opposition of those uh, guards of the construction site, but they carried on uh, protesting. And we even found out that Marat uh, Kuzmulin, who is the vice mayor of Moscow, is most likely the person behind that construction development who, uh, who as of now is not on the sanction list. Его мать имеет офшоры где-то британских британские офшоры, и его родственник получил взятку в 240 миллионов рублей за строительство этого дома. So basically, his mother has some offshore somewhere in Great Britain. And his uh, relative has received a kickback, like a bribe of 240 million rubles for this construction site development. И понятно, что людей возмутило, почему они стали защищать свои права, потому что затронули их самые глубокие чувства и ценности. And it is clear why people poured out to protest and to defend uh, their rights, because their values and their interests were infringed. Потому что это парк, в котором они сами гуляли, когда были детьми, с которых, в которых они гуляли со своими детьми и со своими внуками. Because it's the park where they used to play with their uh, friends when they were kids. That's the park where they took their children to. That's the park where they take their grandkids to play. Но и затронуто чувство справедливости, что мы теряем свой парк, чтобы какой-то чиновник разбогател. So their sense of justice was infringed because they felt like they're losing their park uh, so that some uh, red tape representative would uh, line his pockets and become rich. Что могла сделать я, как общественный лидер? Я могла помочь этим людям, дать им какие-то дополнительные инструменты, связанные со СМИ, с привлечением общественного мнения и так далее. So what I could personally do at my level is to equip them with some leverage and provide them with some tools and instruments, how to work with media and how to increase the public, public awareness, etc. But I personally couldn't bring them to their feelings. These feelings were already there. 
But I personally could not have invoked those deep uh, feelings inside of those people. They already had them dormant, but they had them. И таким образом власти сами а, провоцируют эту активность, потому что они затрагивают чувства, как это с парками происходит, как это происходит а, с а, помойками, где травят детей, а, как это происходит с реновацией, где отбирают дома, как это происходит с а, мессенджером Telegram, когда отбирают а, удобный канал коммуникации. And, uh, uh, the inspiration and uh, the provoking power behind those protests because when they uh, infringe on something personal uh, uh, that community feels related to be it the parks or the landfills where the children are being mugged or when they're being robbed of telegram as a media resource that causes uh, the righteous uh, uh, indignation of the society. Soviet anecdote about uh, Tsar uh, Nikolai II, who deserved uh, uh, honor uh, for the creation of revolutionary situation. At, uh, the, sa the same yes, in current anecdote. Russia. Uh, and uh, I, I believe that uh, uh, Mayor Sabianin and uh, Governor uh, Vorobyov uh, deserve, and also Governor Tuleyev and other persons, uh, including uh, Mr. Putin, deserve. Uh, uh, honor for the creating a civil society in Russia, yeah, really. Um, because uh, it seems to me uh, the su uh, success of the previous year in uh, Moscow in, uh, on the local elections uh, is uh, inspired by uh, mostly by Sabianin uh, so called Trinovatsia. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. And, uh, and uh, also the decisions and uh, pushing the uh, uh, creation of. Uh, um, uh, municipality, uh, town, city, uh, Kruga. Townships. Urban, Urban districts uh, in Moscow region uh, provoked uh, large protests uh, in the Moscow region, uh, in, my, in my region, and some, mm -hmm. uh, some other. And uh, help people to be united uh, and uh, organize it. Uh, and when uh, the problems uh, uh, with a uh, uh, landfill sharp, uh, the people were organized before it uh, because of uh, uh, their factions. Mm. Uh, and uh, my experience is uh, that we uh, help people to create these associations of homeowners in order to help them to uh, solve their problems by themselves. And uh, of course, uh, when uh, they see real help from us, uh, they become to trust us. Also, uh, as a local deputy, I can uh, uh, help another their problem. Uh, and uh, this uh, usual day-to-day -day work uh, makes uh, uh, from them my supporters. And uh, so in this case, uh, during this work, I uh, create a net of my future voters. Mm -hmm. mm. So, uh, if you want to win elections, you should work hard, and uh, there is uh, no other way to win elections. But these are essentially two different things. One is the provocation, the spark to which people react, mm -hmm. and the other is building civil society so that society can improve itself, even if there is not a disaster or a provocation mm -hmm. or a particular issue. And those are not quite the same thing. Mm -hmm. Building civil society strikes mm -hmm. me as more difficult. Reacting to a provocation is, is mm -hmm. something I can, I, it seems to me easier. But building civil society, that's, that's work. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Это работа, да, но она начинается с провокации, это разные этапы. Сначала провокация, потом строительство этого общества. Люди не будут ничего делать, пока у них не появилось какого-то чувства. Когда у них появилось это чувство, они начинают э, самоорганизовываться и дальше двигаться вперед. I agree uh, that they are different, but uh, it all stemmed from the provocation. First the people got provoked and uh, angry and they tried to organize civil uh, participation and civil movement and that is that one does not go without the other so one is actually consequential 
towards the other. First, there was provocation, and then uh, build upon that, there is uh, this attempt to build those uh, uh, change and civil participation, etc. Uh, uh, I'll describe the process. Uh, what, what is uh, what is the social capital? What is the uh, civil society? Is it uh, links mostly links between people. And uh, first, uh, we have a spike, we have uh, some disaster, some frustrating situation, and uh, uh, after that, people uh, uh, get uh, uh, set some new links between each other and uh, create groups of, of interest, create a, a web a groups in the internet and uh, start to communicate with, with each other. And uh, so uh, they are prepared for the next uh, next uh, uh, activity of, uh, of the power. And uh, sometimes uh, that groups uh, are actively searching the information about uh, political and civil activities and opportunities how to improve the situation. And uh, 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 sometimes they uh, uh, they. Uh, find us, people like us, uh, local uh, governance school or some other project and we start uh, the uh, process. Говорила, значит, сначала идет осознание своих ценностей, потом появляются новые компетенции, новые практики, новые институты, новые лидеры. So as I was saying, first you have uh, the comprehension of what your values are, then you develop new core competences, then you uh, train new leaders, and then you change uh, the society towards new tendencies. I, I actually have a lot of things I would like to ask, but uh, given how limited our time is, I do want to give members of the audience an opportunity to do so. I would simply ask that since we are on webcam, uh, uh, since we do have a microphone, and if people would use it, identify yourself. Uh, if you wish to identify your question to a specific person, please do so. Uh, and keep in mind that if there's a need for interpretation, uh, you need to speak in slow and s short uh, sentences, please. So, uh, any are there pro provocations from the audience? Please. Uh, hi. Thank, thank you very much. My name is Katie Fox. I'm from the National Democratic Institute. Mm -hmm. um, I have a question about how change comes about on not, uh, alternatives to protest, um, which it's, I think the Russian authorities are very much afraid of large protests getting out of hand and try to squelch them when they can. Uh, do you, can you see a path by which you, for example, all three of you would seek higher office, would work through political parties? Um, is that a realistic option in Russia? And is it, is it the ambition of any of you? Um, ну, я думаю, что и я, и Владислав, и Наталья ответят совершенно одинаково. I think that uh, myself and Natalia and Vladislav will be uh, answering in unison, exactly giving the same answer. У нас будут выборы в Московской городской думе в 19-м году, и я, и другие муниципальные депутаты, и не только депутаты, планируют принять в них участие, и мы уже сейчас имеем гораздо больше шансов на победу. I just will tell you that uh, come 2019, uh, we are going to have uh, Moscow city municipal elections coming up. I myself and lots of pe city of Moscow, I myself and lots of uh, my colleagues who I know we are gearing towards participation. Я очень попрошу говорить по, по, понемножку, чтобы... Да, sorry. Да, да, sorry, Moscow City Duma. Moscow Duma. City Duma. Sorry, the election towards Moscow City uh, Duma, and we're gearing towards it, and I know uh, quite a lot of people who are full of ambition and desire to partake. Uh, and uh, uh, we, uh, we all, all, we all, all of our uh, candidates uh, to State Duma and our regional Dumas uh, last time, and uh, uh, we said uh, about, uh, as we said about uh, uh, our uh, values, uh, we were there and will come again. 
And uh, the same about elections, we were there and we'll come again. <laughs> As to me, I uh, prepare myself to uh, regional and uh, federal elections uh, in uh, 2021. Uh, but uh, before this, I would like to help local activists in uh, all over the Moscow region to win at uh, local elections. And uh, there are a lot of opportunities uh, because I uh, have already uh, described that uh, there are favorable conditions for grassroots uh, movements. And uh, there will be uh, a lot of uh, local elections uh, in uh, uh, 2019, uh, especially in uh, cities uh, with a uh, uh, huge amount of uh, pro-democratic voters, assigned cities. Uh, so um, I would like to help them, and I uh, even want uh, them to gain majority there and to uh, get real power not only a uh, few deputies or something like that, but get real power and uh, uh, even to appoint their own mayor in this city. Mm -hmm. Я бы хотела добавить, что местное самоуправление... Тут очень важно подчеркнуть, что местное самоуправление важно само по себе, а не только как ступенька на следующий уровень. I would like to only emphasize one uh, more thing, that the local uh, self-governance is important not as a step towards the next level, but it's also important in itself, in a nutshell. Uh, a famous California politician once said that money is the mother's milk of politics. Now, I don't expect politics at the local level to involve quite the same amount of, that you would expect at the national level, but still, people need to have a way to finance printing documents, distributing things, this sort of thing. For a long time in Russia, much of this money came from European and American sources. And that could be a problem because it identified civil society in parts of Russia with foreign countries. And I'm well aware that most civil society in Russia never actually took any foreign money. But the appearance of foreign money being behind civil society could be a problem. So I'm wondering how now in developing municipal level politics in Russia, do you develop local sources of funding to keep this process growing? Uh, may I answer? It, 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 uh, uh, municipal elections uh, da don't cost much money. Uh, for example, it, uh, it, oh, in Moscow it was about uh, one thousand uh, dollars, no more. In the Moscow region, maybe less, maybe more, but it depends. Uh, uh, a local campaign in a, uh, for municipality, uh, for local council uh, in a village uh, uh, district in Moscow region may cost even uh, 10,000 rubles. It's, it's uh, about $150. It's, it, it works. And, uh, and, uh, so uh, in Moscow, our success was uh, uh, also depend of, of it because uh, everybody have a job and some income, mm -hmm. and uh, people pay for themselves in campaign, and uh, also they pay for campaign managers and for distributing materials and so on. And but mostly, uh, if uh, you have not so much uh, district, so much uh, constituency, you can. Uh, uh, conduct uh, a campaign uh, by knocking to the doors and uh, to uh, uh, from a door to door. Mm -hmm, it's a mm -hmm. very popular and very useful idea how to save money on on your p political activity. And uh, if people and also with uh, uh, Facebook and WhatsApp and other technologies and also. Uh, we, we use uh, uh, Telegram channels, <laughs> and uh, it's also uh, uh, help us save money and uh, 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 make a political campaign more effective. And uh, some people I know uh, spend money for even for 
uh, campaigning in Google uh, and uh, other uh, other uh, some some other uh, spaces and so on. I would like to add one uh, crucial uh, part to that, one thing that we teach our uh, students in our school. Мы им говорим, что на стороне наших противников, оппонентов есть деньги, есть власти, есть разнообразные ресурсы, СМИ. We always tell them that our opponents have multiple resources, they have power, official power uh, backing them up, they have media resources of all sorts, money. they have money. money. Um, но у нас есть тот ресурс, которого нет у них. Uh, это ресурс наших личностей. But we do have a resource none of them have. Uh, this is the personality resource that each and every one of us possesses. Это наша компетенция, наша вера, наша, э, наши мечты, наши цели. That's our competences, that's our dreams, that's our beliefs, that's our targets and objectives. И такой ресурс не купишь ни за какие деньги. And that is the resource you cannot procure no, no matter how much money you possess. И это очень эффективный ресурс, который позволяет побеждать. And that is quite an effective resource that helps you win. John. Uh, John Herbst, Atlanta Council. Um, it's very interesting and encouraging to listen to you. Uh, but the question for me is, why are you permitted to exist and to conduct your activity? Presumably the security organs know that you're doing what you're doing, or maybe they don't. So I, I'd like your, your view as to why. <laughs> why you are able to do what you're doing. Um, yeah, no, uh, not against the law. Uh, all of what we uh, have done uh, uh, was in accordance with the federal and regional laws. We don't violate them. So uh, uh, I don't uh, uh, feel nervous about this. Мы еще бы добавили, что мы открыты, и мы э, пытаемся делать все э, э, ну, как бы очень открыто, и, и, и это позволяет нам быть на виду, и это нас защищает. And I also would like to uh, add that we're very open, we're very transparent, and we act in wide open, and that gives us a certain protection. Мы вчера, э, позавчера мы вышли к российскому посольству, чтобы показать, что мы здесь, и мы здесь открыты, и мы не приехали с какой тайной миссией, ни о чем тайном мы ни с кем не договариваемся. Uh, just the day before yesterday, we uh, walked in front of the Russian embassy to demonstrate that we're here openly, and uh, we're not here on some secret, you know, mysterious mission, and we're not having some kind of mystic discussions, uh, in, uh, etc., with some mystical people. Вы были перед посольством да. или внутри? Нет, перед. In front, in front of uh, the Russian embassy. Около столба. Uh, by the, by those holes. Yeah. But uh, it, it, it seems to me now we uh, uh, do the work for our embassy and uh, for uh, our uh, Ministry of International Affairs because we show a new face of Russian politics. I know that uh, sometimes uh, uh, our politics uh, do not have such an attractive face. Uh, we Еще одна из важных вещей. Вот когда в прошлом году я на митинге меня ударил полицейский. One more important thing. Last year, when a police officer struck me uh, during a rally, я попала в больницу, и очень много людей и СМИ и активистов меня поддержали. I was hospitalized as a result, and many activists and media representatives supported me for that. Нашли сразу юристы Сергей Панченко, который стал защищать мои права в следствии. And they immediately found me a legal representation. Uh, counsel Сергей Панченко, who uh, represented uh, me in the official in the investigation. Это бесплатно. Free pro bono. Mm. And uh, also we have a very interesting situation when uh, your public activity is not connected with the uh, 
uh, stepping uh, extent, degree. a degree of uh, dangerous, degree of personal dangerous, uh, uh, and uh, sometimes uh, publicity uh, help you to uh, be safety on local level, especially because uh, I know that uh, my uh, local colleagues from United Russia and uh, um, uh, criminals uh, who supported them knew about my public activity and uh, it made me more um, uh, safety. Ну, и, еще очень важный момент, то что никакой um, персональной дискриминации вот, по телевидению uh, или какие-то ролики в YouTube, они не работают против тебя. Люди все понимают. One more uh, important moment that not a single disinformation towards you as a personality, not, no matter how many YouTube videos against you they will put out there, it's not going to work against you. Uh, it, uh, um, our authorities will rather catch an uh, ordinary blogger or student uh, than uh, people who are in on, a, on public and who are famous in some У нас есть хорошая поговорка, любой пиар хорош, кроме некролога. Oh my god. <laughs> we have a very uh, good proverb which says any publicity uh, apart from eulogy is a good publicity. As long as they spell your name right. Yes. <laughs> you were right when you said that what you're doing at the local level is in and of itself important. But it's also not a hallmark of Russian governance that local autonomy or serious decision making is done at the local level. Are you seeing that happen now? In Russian history, not just under Putin, the vertical is very important for governance. Oh. Mm -hmm. You are operating at the local level. My question is, so are you able to make decisions at the local level as a result of your activity? Uh, I, I disagree with the point that uh, uh, vertical is a part of uh, Russian mentality and Russian history. It is not our tradition. I should remind about I'm sorry, but Novgorodskaya Respublika, uh, and sure. also about Zemstvo and about other uh, other things. And uh, when I uh, conducted a campaign in a, a rural um, uh, district of uh, Moscow Oblast, people said that uh, they uh, want the Soviet Union uh, be restored, and I ask why? Because we have more um, uh, local self-governance. We have our Soviet, uh, local Soviet, uh, local councils uh, uh, had uh, more power, uh, and uh, th so it was in the, in the past, but now, now not. Я еще заметила сейчас, когда работаем с пан депутатами, я заметила, что у нас некоторый консенсус есть из Единой России, из администрации региональной, которая на местном уровне работает. And I've just noticed recently that in our uh, cooperation and collaboration, uh, we have a certain agreement uh, with the United Russia and local uh, regional uh, authorities as well. Nobody wants to get the higher powers involved. Everybody wants to resolve issues at the local level. И мы ездим по стране, и мы видим, что такие настроения практически во всех регионах. Просто чиновники пока не готовы uh, идти против вертикали. Открыто. Но внутренне они, мне кажется, уже готовы. Hmm. May I add something? Of course, we uh, promote democratic values, uh, but uh, also we are for justice, and our aim is to help people. And uh, maybe uh, in some places, uh, in local administration, there are people, officials, uh, that only want to help people, uh, also want to help people. And uh, 
uh, if you see such people there, of course it's necessary to establish relations with them and uh, coordinate efforts uh, uh, in order to uh, make uh, life of uh, people a bit a little better, you know, something like this. So uh, I think uh, it's uh, necessary to uh, try to do this. Uh, otherwise, uh, mm -hmm. you will not be able to uh, make influence at all, at all, at local level, without majority. You you were mentioned. Uh, sorry, go ahead, please. Thank you. I'm Sean Keeley from the American Interest. I was wondering if you could discuss generational trends in people's willingness to get involved as activists or get involved politically at the local level. From the Western perspective, we often think of this as being a young person's game. We look at who's coming out in support of Navalny, but I wonder if you see a lot of middle-aged Russians or older Russians also getting involved at the local level. Thank you. Yuri has uh, uh, young uh, political leaders in her family, so maybe she's mm. <laughs> two, two young political, two young political, political leaders. leaders. <laughs> yes, my um, my старшая дочь, я буду по-русски говорить, моя старшая дочь, она феминистка. My older daughter is a feminist. И она делает много разных проектов. Uh, и на самом деле, ну и сын тоже у меня ходит на митинги и очень много интересуется политикой. She's involved in uh, a great lot of uh, various she, projects. Not she, he, my son. And, uh, no, я про дочь uh -huh. еще говорю. Uh, and uh, as far as my son goes, he also partakes actively in uh, rallying and uh, other <coughs> events. Uh, я много работаю со студентами. И несколько мы имеем проектов, связанных с развитием политических компетенций у студентов. And I work with students and I work on uh, developing political competences uh, among students. И мы понимаем, что ну, сейчас запрос у этого поколения на политику, именно на политику, на разную политику, но на политику гораздо выше. Uh, and we understand that uh, the current generation they have more aspirations about uh, getting more politicalized. Но это речь идет о крупных городах. Мы очень мало знаем, что про регионы. When I say that, I'm, uh, we're talking about uh, the major, uh, you know, like uh, big cities. We don't know what happens uh, uh, in smaller ones. Но, конечно, движущейся силой всех протестов является, тем не менее, средний возраст 30-50. But of course, the locomotive for all the change, nonetheless, is middle aged from 30 to 50, the range. Mm -hmm. okay. Okay. Hi, my name is uh, David Sacconi. I'm a professor at George Washington University in DC. Um, what are your relations like with the local United Russia mayor, Chinovniki officials? How has your presence in government changed the way that the system ran before? And how have the mayors reacted and the other deputati on the councils responded to having people from the opposition working alongside them in the institutions, maybe trying to change something from within? So you said that you don't want the problems to rise up to the next level, that's understandable, but how has the cooperation been with United Russia on the ground, given that you now are their counterparts, their colleagues, um, their partners in some sense. Ну, на самом деле мы боялись, что будет очень много провокаций, но на самом, но реально нам удается как-то работать. Как вообще работаете? Что? Um, so no. basically, uh, we were afraid that there will be a great lot of provocations, but real, in real life, we somehow are managing to work in real life. Потому что перед нами стоят конкретные задачи, мы пытаемся их решить. И чиновники, в принципе, не заинтересованы в конфликте. And we have some concrete tasks on our agenda, and we're trying to resolve them. 
and the red tape is not interested in conflicting with us. Любые конфликты у нас происходят, если им сверху партия приказывает. Any conflicts that we have uh, between us is when they, uh, you know, send down some directions or you know, uh, uh, orders to for conflicts. Они очень боялись, когда мы приходили, выиграли выборы. Это было видно, что люди нас боятся и думают, что мы такие uh, сумасшедшие, значит, которые бегают и там будут их кусать. When we first came after we won the election, we could tell that people were quite fearful of us. They were scared. They thought that we're the, the whole bunch of lunatics, crazy people who are going to chase after them and bite them. Но когда они увидели, что мы нормальные люди, люди, с которыми можно о чем-то договариваться, что которые компетентные, имеют какие-то цели понятные, то оказалось, что в принципе можно найти какие-то общие точки сопротивления. When they figured out that we're just regular people who have certain objectives and have core competences and we can uh, strike uh, an agreement with them and uh, you know, agree on certain uh, issues and so they, they became okay with us. Uh, in some districts of uh, Moscow region, uh, local authorities are unable to work with uh, independent deputies. Uh, for example, uh, in uh, Zhukovsky districts, uh, cars of uh, uh, deputies uh, mm, may uh, be burned uh, during night, uh, and uh, yes, that's Moshaisk. Yeah. Uh, yes, of course. Yes, yes. Uh, but uh, in other places, uh, maybe like uh, Hinki, uh, local administrations are much more reasonable, and so uh, they uh, don't prevent prevent us to work and uh, we may even cooperate with them uh, at uh, local questions in order to help people uh, because if they uh, see that we uh, really try to do uh, life of people better so uh, that's uh, good for everybody so uh, why should they prevent us to do this uh, of course uh, there are a lot of situations uh, in other regions when uh, 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 independent deputies are even uh, deprived from their mandate um, and uh, even in the Moscow region too uh, but uh, it depends uh, only uh, on the personality of uh, head of administration or uh, if uh, maybe the independent deputy made something uh, wrong against the governor and the uh, governor ordered to deprive him uh, from his mandate uh, or to prosecute him or something like that, such kind of thing. Конфликты возникают только каких-то очень принципиальных политических вопросов. Вот мы... The conflicts only emerge when we have a, a die-hard political issue. Uh, я хожу на заседание все время задачи с со значком верните 28 голосов такой вот здесь у меня For example, I always go to the meetings with a little badge saying return the 28 votes. Потому back. что uh, у нас была фальсификация и мы потеряли одно место в um, совете именно из-за uh, того, что приписали 28 галочек в бюллетене. Yeah, because there was a fact of uh, falsification in the results of the voting and we uh, lost a vote because they added uh, 28 fake votes. Uh, so that's why I wear it. И это, конечно, тема вызывает серьезные конфликты. Но, несмотря на это, нам удается по другим вопросам сотрудничать. И особенно интересные случаи, когда Единая Россия становится в меньшинстве, с меньшей оппозицией. Uh, a minority, you know, like uh, and uh, as an opposition. Ну и даже у нас, где она в большинстве, у нас очень маленьком большинстве, оказывается, что они тоже политики, им тоже хочется как-то добиться уважения голосующих. And of course, you know, like while United uh, Russia is always the majority, in in certain cases they become a minority, and politicians that represent that uh, party, they also want uh, to get respect 
of the voters and the popularity as well. То есть конкуренция она сам по себе продвигает демократию. So competition promotes democracy in itself. Uh, I'm afraid we're now running yeah, out of time, but I would note that earlier today in Moscow, during his inaugural speech, uh, President Putin drew attention to the fact that this year is the 25th anniversary of the Russian Constitution, and that that Constitution guarantees to all Russian citizens the political rights to do exactly <laughs> what our guests have been doing. And so we wish them well in the exercise of their constitutional and legal rights. Uh, and we certainly hope to be able to welcome them again here in Washington. Uh, and we thank them very much for spending time with us uh, and helping to inform us. So thank you very, thank very you. much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.